Hello my loves, welcome back to another reading vlog. I am coming at you today from this very awkward angle because I wanted to just very quickly start off this vlog. First of all, happy October, the best month of the year. I'm pretty sure I already had a vlog go up before this one but it's now actually October when I'm filming so that makes me very very happy. Autumn has well and truly hit Edinburgh, it is now very very cold. <laughs> Not very cold but you know there's a chill in the air, I now can wear jumpers and stuff without being too warm. And I've been meaning to start this vlog for a couple of days now but I just wanted to very quickly jump in and actually do that because I have started reading The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This one is a dark academia tied with fantasy book that follows six people who are candidates towards an initiation to become Alexandrians who are a very specific set of people chosen to kind of preserve the knowledge and everything that is very important to keep alive. And if you become an Alexandrian then you are basically the elite of the elite. You have every single opportunity that you could possibly ever even imagine but not everybody who is chosen makes it through the initiation and so we're following the next six candidates and their process through this. I am only about 30 pages in so far but I already wanted to give an update to say that I love the writing in this. This is one of those books where I was impressed by the writing from the very first paragraph and was just like oh okay. It's kind of wordy but not in a we're taking too long to describe everything way, just in a way that different language is being used as opposed to everyday dialogue and I just really enjoy it. Like it's so nice to read and I'm very intrigued to see how that ties in with the actual plot of the book because so far we're just meeting the characters but I'm already having a good time and it's so rare that I enjoy a book right from the very first paragraph or that I get a good feeling about it at least so I now have really high hopes for this. I so hope that this pulls through and is actually a really good story to go with the writing because if so if I called it from the very first paragraph that this is one that I'm obsessed with then that has not happened in years I don't think so I would be impressed, very very impressed. So I did just want to kickstart this vlog and let you know that because I am about to get ready for bed and read some more so I didn't want to get too into it before telling you guys my first impressions. So I shall be back within the actual daylight hours with my next update but yeah. I hope you're all doing well. Tell me what you're currently reading below and I shall be back in a hot second. <laughs> We're just gonna pop that away. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Hello my loves, I don't think I have updated this vlog since my very rushed beginning of oh my god I'm reading this book and I love it, I'm gonna go read. So <laughs> Here's an actual update, it is now Sunday. It's around midday and I am about to meet up with Cody and we're just gonna have a wander around, see what autumnal scenes we can find because autumn has started to hit Edinburgh now and oh my god, just the photos I can get. <laughs> it makes me so happy. <laughs> 
I haven't actually seen anybody in a hot minute so it should be nice to have a little catch up with Cody and we were going to go up Arthur's seat but my body today is already protesting every single movement I make so I think we're gonna save that for another day and just have a slow wander around instead but before I do that I wanted to give you an actual reading update because I am now 166 pages into the Atlas 6. I've been reading this really slowly because I'm currently loving it so much that I don't want to read it. <laughs> I'm scared that I'm going to be disappointed the more I read but also I really want to read it because I'm really enjoying it so I don't know what all that is about but I'm still really enjoying it. This is definitely more of a character based book rather than a plot one because not that much has happened. I really like character based books so this is probably perfect for me. <laughs> With there being so many characters I can see why it's taken so long for anything to actually happen because to get to know them properly it's taken a while like there's six of them you have to go around all of them one by one. There's nobody that I particularly dislike. I will say that there are two guys that I struggle to differentiate between but I do feel like they're the characters that we've had the least amount of screen time of so far so maybe that's why. I don't really know I'm not entirely sure but I am intrigued to see where it goes. I'm intrigued to see where we start picking up the pace a little bit because there has been one kind of action scene so far that I actually really enjoyed reading. I don't usually like reading action scenes but in this one it just worked so well. So I am well and truly invested in this book and I both want to read it as quick as possible and also not at all. I don't know how much longer it will take me to actually read the other half of it but I am very very much enjoying it. I've seen some people say that the Dark Academia vibes in this don't really pull through through, but I actually think they do. I think it's because it is heavily rooted in fantasy, like the academic side of things is magical research, but I personally think it does have the Dark Academia vibes far more than any other book that I've read that has both fantastical elements and Dark Academia vibes. Do with that what you will. I'm really enjoying it as both a fantasy book and a Dark Academia book. I'm very much looking forward to continuing reading that, but I have also picked up Tomi by Junji Ito. This one is a really big manga and honestly I feel like the synopsis just says it all because it says murdered again and again, one girl always comes back for more. Tomi is a femme fatale with long black hair and a beauty mark just under her left eye. She can seduce nearly any man and drive them to murder as well, even though the victim is often Tomi herself. While one lover seeks to keep her for himself, another grows terrified of the immortal succubus. But soon they realise that no matter how many times they kill her, the world will never be free of Tomi. I don't know whether it's Tomi or Tomi, I do need to google that, but I am about 300 pages into this, it's about 700 pages long. This is really bothering me, hang on. There we go, the flick can look like a bougie fringe instead. As I was saying, this is my first Junji Ito manga that I'm reading. I've been intrigued about Junji Ito for quite a while now because I used to know somebody who was obsessed with them. So they've always been vaguely on my radar, but I have seen more and more of them recently, probably because of spooky season and them being known as one of the most like disturbing horror manga authors, I believe, which I can definitely see in this book because, oh my God. Some of the drawings are truly disturbing, but I've come to realise I'm one of these people who, when something horrific happens in a horror book, I laugh. Like, when I see these things, it just baffles me that somebody could have made up that image. And I laugh because it's so obscure and so disturbing and I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> but I find it entertaining and I think that is also a really good thing, like I'm pretty sure that is where a lot of the entertainment for horror comes from for some people. So it's working wonders on me. I am really enjoying the story as well. The fact that she just keeps coming back in different ways is really something. It's uh, <laughs> the word for it truly is disturbing because she just keeps regenerating. So even if they just completely chop her up and throw all of her limbs in completely different places, those then just start growing again and you end up with more of her. She multiplies and it's really creepy, I do have to admit. So I'm enjoying reading this one. I'm enjoying the experience. I'm intrigued to see what the other 400 pages that I still need to read do because if it is just 700 pages of this one person regenerating and like being impossible to kill then I feel like I'm gonna get a bit bored or it's gonna get repetitive but we shall see, we shall see. So with that being said I am going to finish getting ready to go out basically just putting a bag together and we'll see what we end up doing today. I'm not entirely sure there's no set plan. We shall see. Oh also as well let me show you 
my new nails because we've got the spooky season nails out. I didn't really know what I wanted when I went in besides vaguely Halloween themed and this is what we came up with. So I do have the little spider webs on these nails and then some ghosties on these ones. The very dark purple and copper colour scheme. So I am obsessed with them. <laughs> they also go really nicely with my outfit today. So all of the autumnal vibes. We love it. Here is today's outfit. Honestly, I love that it's just really simple, really comfy, but looks more thought out than it has been, purely because big ass jacket. <laughs> we stand. light and an angle situation but here we are it is thursday evening on the 14th of october i feel like i skipped a big part of this vlog <laughs> i ended up having just a really bad week but we're on the we're on the up i had a streak of bad luck and uh yeah in the midst of all that i did end up buying myself some new books <laughs> which i really didn't need to and i also finished a book and made progress in another one so Get ready for one hell of an update. So to show you the books I got, I basically ended up buying four tiny spooky books. <laughs> I think I just wanted more spooky reads that I would actually be able to read sometime soon because I keep adding books to my TBR that are not necessarily long, but I'm not a quick reader, you know? So I picked up some that I could just read pretty much in one sitting. The first one being Fangs by Sarah Anderson. This one is a very, very quick read. I know that because I read it last night. But this one is a romance between a vampire and a werewolf and it's probably the most wholesome thing I have ever read in my life. I picked this up because Cody mentioned it and I just needed something that was kind of wholesome when I was feeling very, very sulky for the past week. So I read it and I loved it. I rated it four stars. It's super cute. There's not even like, a bad moment in the book. It's just cute little moments of a vampire and a werewolf romance. <laughs> also full of lots of puns that made me chuckle. In a similar vein, I picked up The Sad Ghost Club by Liza Meddings. I don't actually know what this one's about. It just also looked cute, so I got it. I think Jade really enjoyed this one as well. On the back it says, this is not a sad story, though it begins with a struggle and anxious swirling thoughts but sometimes even the worst of days can surprise you. These are the sort of books that I just like having so that when I do feel a bit down, I can get to them. Just give them a little reread and feel like I'm doing something, gives me a little bit of a distraction. So I have those. This book I picked up because I saw it in one of Jodie at Vanilla Moon's vlogs and this was a cover by, I'm not even going to lie. It's a very random book because it's poems bewitched and haunted, but it's this tiny, little pumpkin covered book from the Everyman's Library, which I just adore that collection. It looks so beautiful. Ooh, there's one about Cersei. Oh, that literally is Homer. Yep, that's exciting. Underneath as well, it is orange. <laughs> I don't know, it just looked really cool and I wanted it immediately, so I went and got it. <laughs> and then one that is a little bit of a longer story, although it's only about 220 pages, is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. Funny story about this one, I have been eyeing it up for a long time because the publisher is actually based in my hometown. They recently started. This was one of their first books that they released. And so I was already eyeing it up. And then it just kind of became a thing on booktube, which was really strange to see. So I have been meaning to pick this up for a little while, but I haven't done. But I keep seeing it more and more and I am intrigued about it. But then specifically, I was watching 
Jan Agaton's vlogs and also just chatting to her and she is obsessed with this book so that just gave me more incentive to buy it so <laughs> Here we are. I'm very easily influenced when it comes to hearing people talk about books, clearly. When it comes to my reading update though, I am very happy to say that I have finally finished reading Tommy Air. I say finally. It took me, I think I picked it up about three times, but I just feel like I've been really slow at reading because last week I was just so tired all the time that I barely read anything and so still trudging through the same books that I started this vlog with. But I did finish reading Tommy Air last night, which I believe that is how it's pronounced. I know when I started this vlog I was calling it Tommy, but I believe it's Tommy Air. And I really enjoyed this one. It was so messed up. <laughs> it was so messed up. I loved it. I'm not sure I could have ever imagined the things that happened in this book and the images that I was presented with, but it would indeed be horrifying. So it suits the genre. Good job. <laughs> So that's such a really patronising. You know how to do your job, well done. I did find that it started getting a little bit repetitive because this story is very much a repeat because Tomia just keeps coming back no matter how they try and get rid of her. She just keeps coming back so it does get very repetitive and that it's a very cyclical story. I feel like maybe after the halfway point it did start to switch up a little bit how the story was going. I was a bit confused by... I don't... I feel like I maybe should have researched what this is more <laughs> because I did just pick this up at random and read it. So I'm not sure whether this hardback is multiple volumes based on one thing or whether it's meant to be one big story, whether it's meant to be episodic, I, I don't know. It felt very episodic because there would just be every so often almost chapter breaks saying end and it would just stop that story and start a new one but then some of them did carry on because I thought every single individual chapter of sorts was a separate volume at one point. But then some of them did continue on from each other, so I wasn't... I don't know. I need to look into it some more. Either way, it didn't ruin my enjoyment of it in any way. It's just something that I was wondering about as I was reading, so I am going to research that. And I have actually purchased more Junjita books since reading this one, because I think that they are just generally an author that I would be very interested to continue, but actually look into it some more so that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, and I rated that four out... I rated that four out of five stars. And I'm still, still, still reading the Atlas Six. I have about 100 pages left, and I think the reason why I'm taking so long to read this now, whereas before I was kind of delaying reading it because I was enjoying it so much and didn't want to ruin it, now I'm just struggling to actually have the focus needed to sit down and read. Like I keep fidgeting too much, I keep wanting to get up every two seconds, and I think generally that's just because of how the week's been going so far, like I can't rest basically but I really want to finish it because I'm enjoying it a lot still and I want to get to all my other books and I already somehow feel like I'm running out of time. <laughs> this has started to feel a little bit slow now because there's still not too much happening and we're not really learning too much that's new. I do think in terms of character building it is getting a little bit repetitive in that the characters in this book are built as almost caricatures, not entirely but in terms of it seems there is one quality that every character has that keeps being repeated in some way or another to really emphasise that quality in them. So one of them is really annoying to everybody else, one of them is the seductress of the group. And while I wouldn't say it's 2D in that sense, I do think it's becoming, at this point in the book, a thing that I am just kind of like, okay, you don't need to keep saying this, we know who the characters are now. So I'm kind of hoping that stops from this point on because like we know our characters at this point in the book. We don't need to keep emphasising these things. But I'm still really enjoying just reading it and being in the story. So I'm actually going to go and read a little bit of it now. I did set up to have this really cosy evening because I decided to have a hot chocolate and I haven't had one in ages so I went all out. I had sticky toffee pudding hot chocolate with whipped cream, salted caramel marshmallows and cinnamon on top <laughs> and I had a cinnamon bun for good measure and it was incredible. Do not regret anything. It was a delight. But instead of actually cozying up with that and sitting down to read like I intended to, I just scrolled on my phone. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Reading needs to be done. <laughs> Hello my loves. So it is after work on a Friday and I am about to just go for a random wander, see if I can find some autumnal trees. 
<laughs> I have my suspicions that the walk that's not too far away from me may be turning into a very autumnal looking area so I'm going to go there because I haven't actually just been out and walked for a while so I'm gonna do that I am probably gonna feel very self-conscious about the makeup in the process I tried doing the like cool reddy orange under eye thing but I don't know if I quite pull it off but either way we're here now so let's go find autumn <laughs> There's so much that I want to do with my evening, but I'm also feeling lazy. I want to work on a video that's going up on Monday so that I don't have to do too much of it over the weekend. I probably will have to do at least a little bit, but it's one of my reading gothic short stories out loud videos and the actual visual of the pages turning, I need to do at night because I need dark lighting and, you know, just the spooky vibes. So I keep putting off doing that, but I want to try and film it today but because of how I film it I film it alongside the audio so that I can you know turn the pages at the right time which means I need to finish editing the audio so that I can actually just listen to it while I'm filming and do that properly so I want to do that I also want to film an introduction to that video but I also want to have a bath and do some reading and do some baking I want to make another apple crumble I think I did that towards the start of this vlog I only make around three servings three or four servings depending on how much I eat because it is just me and I don't want it to go stale in the fridge if that's what would happen to it. <laughs> so I basically just make myself more from scratch whenever I do fancy some, which I do this evening, especially because it is a little bit chilly today, not entirely. Like I went outside for my walk without a coat on, but it definitely felt like autumn. There was a chill in the air and I keep feeling the need to layer up. So I just kind of want to have a cozy moment where I just sit all curled up in bed, eating warm apple crumble with custard and oh, I want that moment, so. That means I need to bake apple crumble, but like I said, it's already half eight at night. So what what can I do in, uh, in one evening? I don't know. We'll find out. Let's be real. I probably will just end up staying up to work on the video, but I can't stay up too late because I have something very exciting happening tomorrow that I need to be up for early. So, so with that being said, I'm going to go film the introduction of the video I've just mentioned, have a bath, do a little bit of reading, and then I will probably do some baking, edit while that's baking, and just figure it out from there, basically. <laughs> Hello, my loves. I am walking around as I do this because I am needing to leave the house, like, right now. <laughs> but I am about to do something very exciting. I am going to go and get my first tattoo. And <laughs> not just my first tattoo, I'm having two tattoos. And also two ear piercings later in the afternoon. So I'm just gonna go and get stabbed today. Um, yep, that's, that's happening. Ah! <laughs> I did the thing. I did all the things. <laughs> As I said earlier, I went to go and get stabbed a lot today. <laughs> to give further context, because I didn't have time this morning, I had actually booked in an appointment to have my third lobe piercings done on both ears. If you saw my last vlog, you'll have seen that I had my helix done. So I went to the same place as that, but as with a lot of piercing places here in the UK, they do also do tattoos. Now, I actually had this design pop into my head, or rather more of a symbol popped into my head, and I just knew that I wanted this as a tattoo, which is really funny to me because before I have always liked tattoos, but I've never thought that either they would suit me or that I would just be bothered enough to actually get one. But I just knew with absolute and complete clarity that this was something I wanted doing. I tested out the idea of having something on my arm in this place through using temporary methods and didn't get bored of it. So decided to go ahead with it. This idea sort of spiraled. I ended up wanting a matching one that didn't exactly match. And when I contacted them about it since they knew I was coming in to get my ears done they were like you could just have it done on the same day if you wanted 
So I did. <laughs> so I got stabbed with a needle in four different places today. Love that. To show you what I had done, I now have these two tattoos on my arm. Obviously they are still currently very red and kind of blurry looking because I literally had it done this morning. So they do of course need to heal but now I have two little witchy designs on the side of my arm and I absolutely adore them! I have tattoos! I never thought this would be a thing! <laughs> I'm so thrilled. I feel so cool as well. <laughs> As if a tiny bit of ink has just like changed my persona. I'm now cool. <laughs> Not how it works, but I think they're really cool. And I am obsessed. So this was the original design. I designed both of these myself. Not that they're anything too fancy, but this was the original one that I wanted. And then this one came afterwards because I knew I wanted something that kind of matched, but didn't. Cause I'm not about symmetry. I like things to look uneven. <laughs> so I ended up taking the moon from this design and putting it into the middle of this one. We've got the dots to tie it together. And yeah, I am obsessed. I'm so happy. It also didn't hurt as much as I thought it would. The only thing I was even vaguely anxious about beforehand was just not knowing a comparison to the feeling of having a tattoo done. I can't remember if I said before but these are my first ones so I just didn't really know what to expect when going in but one it really didn't take that long since they are just pretty simple designs. In fact I think it took them longer to actually draw and scale the design to how I wanted it compared to them actually tattooing me so it was a really quick process. And as a comparison for me this honestly felt more like a really aggressive pins and needles because it is like right on the bone with the occasional cat scratch but I had a cat for like 11 years who I would quite often play fight with <laughs> so I'm used to cat scratches it really didn't bother me all that much and like I said it was over in no time and now I have pretty designs on my arms <laughs> So yes, then I went and got a Starbucks because I had a couple of hours to kill between having this done and also having my piercings done. Went to go and get a pumpkin spice latte, came back, had my ears done. That again took no time, it never really does. But I do also now have my third ear piercings. They are currently a bit swollen and also none of the earrings match, but it's just the easiest ones to manage right now when things are healing. So in the space of a few weeks, I've had three piercings and two tattoos. Weirdly enough, I am still managing to sleep all right. I've mastered the art of sleeping in positions that don't make my ears touch anything. <laughs> but yeah, now I just have piercings and tattoos and I'm very happy. And then I also finally finished reading the atlas six which wow i don't like matte black covers because you can see your fingerprints all over them i finally finished reading this i didn't actually expect to i thought i would finish this tomorrow because i still had over 100 pages left i was kind of dragging my feet i didn't really know what to do with my evening so i spent a while just watching some true crime videos on youtube as i usually do and then just found myself aimlessly scrolling on social media for ages because i couldn't figure out what i wanted to do so i eventually told myself to just sit down and read a chapter and then i could figure out what to do after that if i didn't want to read anymore then i didn't have to but i actually put on a dark academia playlist since this is dark academia vibes and I ended up finishing the book. <laughs> so I don't know whether having a background playlist of wordless music is the trick I need to be able to sit down and focus on reading at the minute but it worked and I read it and I really really enjoyed it. I have rated this 4.5 out of 5 stars. I did debate the rating a little bit because for a large part of this book it would have been 5 stars but then I think from the 200 page mark I started feeling a bit not quite five star-ish because of what I've mentioned before where some of the character traits were being repeated a lot. It turns out that that repetition is the one fault I can find for this book because that repetition actually led me to guessing one of the main aspects of the ending of this book <laughs> and I'm not sure whether it was meant to be a surprise but I saw it coming because I was just suspicious of this one phrase that kept being repeated and I was correct to suspect it because that is what happened. The last few chapters also just fell a little bit flat to me because I was just like that was wrapped up very quickly to say how slow going this book was and you're kind of just given a lot of information at the end but it still made for a great story. I really, really want the sequel. I love the characters being morally grey, not all of them, 
but a lot of the characters are morally grey and it just makes it so interesting because you're never really on anybody's side but you're also rooting for them and you don't really know what's going to happen because everything's a bit shifty. <laughs> this managed to be intense while not that much was happening because you were just so caught up in this like tiny isolated group of people and I do just think that that is a real talent to be able to write so I really really enjoyed this one. Cannot wait for the rest of the series. I imagine there's going to be a bit of a delay because this has since been picked up by Tor so this book is actually being published again officially by a traditional publisher in March of next year I think. So I imagine there's going to be some time between the second book but either way I will be here and waiting for it because this was just really really good. <laughs> So I don't actually know what to do with the rest of my evening because it's currently about half past ten at night which for me still means I've got a few more hours to kill before I even start feeling tired. I'm tempted to do some more reading because now that I've actually sat down and read and finished a book I now have that motivation to keep going. So I might do that. I have actually started another book. Hang on, let me grab it because I don't currently know where it is. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I started reading The Library of the Dead yesterday. I did not get far into it at all. I think maybe about 40 pages just because I wanted to listen to an audiobook so I put that one on. This book is a fantasy book that's set in Edinburgh, features in Bob Wayne magic, has something to do with an ancient occult library. We're following a girl who can speak to ghosts and she drops out of school to make this her job because why not make money out of a thing that you have a talent with? But then as these ghosts start whispering to her about children going going missing and being returned in a very empty state like they just don't react to anything. She feels obliged to get involved some way because you know she's being given this information and it's in her area and she's probably the only one who can help since she has this information to hand. So this one sounds very dark in like a ghostly things are always haunted type of way and from the first 40 pages that I've read the writing style something to get used to. Not because it's like out there or anything but mainly because I don't know where to place this in terms of time frame. <laughs> I don't think it said explicitly what year this is set in but one minute the main character will mention being paid in shillings and then she'll say things like dope <laughs> and she's speaking in very colloquial terms that are very very modern, incredibly modern. I don't usually like that but then we've got the old history. <laughs> And I'm just like, I'm going to presume that this is some kind of alternative history in which things like shillings just stuck around. <laughs> it's really throwing me off. I think more so because I don't know if I actually like the audiobook for this because even though you do have the Scottish accent there, I don't think the voice matches the character all too well. So I don't actually know if I am going to continue with the audiobook. Maybe I would just get used to it but something about it is just really throwing me off and I think it might be the voice of the audiobook narrator. Especially because she sounds about 13. <laughs> she sounds like a young girl and it just doesn't match with the image of the character that I've got in my head so I don't really know. I'm willing to keep trying. So I think I might try to continue this one just with my own eyeballs rather than with an audiobook but we'll see, we'll see. This is why I don't know what to do. There's just so many things I want to read right now. <laughs> I am going to go and get ready for bed. Pajamas on, makeup off, all that good stuff. Figure out what I'm doing with the rest of my evening. I do feel weirdly unsettled and I don't know whether it's because I have an appointment tomorrow. Not for anything exciting this time, just to go and get my laptop repaired which I'm weirdly anxious about. I don't know why, I think it's just because I have never stepped foot into an Apple store before and they look scary. <laughs> I'm more concerned that because I'm getting it fixed on a Sunday that they won't be able to fix it within like the time frame of Sunday afternoon because your girl's gotta work on Monday. I'm kind of hoping it'll only take an hour or two because then I can just go and sit in a coffee shop somewhere and read but we'll see. <laughs> hello hello it is now Sunday around midday and I am about to set off to go and take my laptop in for repairs but I just wanted to give an update because I actually ended up reading quite a lot this morning and I'm actually kind of hoping to finish this today because apparently I only have an hour and a half left of the audiobook so that's doable. <laughs> so I think when I go out I'm going to take this with me and my earphones so that if I do get to go to a coffee shop while I'm waiting for my laptop to be repaired I can continue listening and make some more progress but I have very mixed thoughts on this book so far because one thing that I was saying before is that I couldn't figure out the age of the character. Turns out she's 14. <laughs> she's just about to turn 15. So when I was trying to figure out her age and saying that she sounds like a 13 year old to me in the actual audiobook narration but then seems older, 
I still don't really know what to do with that because you could argue that it reads that way because she's been forced to grow up quickly because she's had to deal with poverty, she is largely the supporting force of her family and she also deals with things like ghosts on a daily basis and is quite literally being haunted every single day of her life so there's a lot that she's been through and having to deal with on a daily basis that would have forced her to grow up quickly which is maybe why she's speaking as if she knows so much about the world. She also speaks quite explicitly like there's a quite a lot of phrases that she says that are just quite blunt and explicit and I think that's honestly the only reason that this book is sold as an adult book because it does read kind of young adult to me but you would have to take out the explicit phrases if that was the case. But while all of that stuff about her having to grow up quickly would apply I also just don't believe that these people who are chasing her up for rent money would be doing that to a 14 year old. <laughs> the believability just isn't there for me, it hasn't been built up enough for me to kind of get behind that so I just don't really know what to do with that information, I can't build her character properly in my head in terms of her age. But I've realised that one of the main things that is making me feel very displaced in this book is actually how disjointed some of it is and the lack of why. <laughs> Reading from this character's perspective she is not one to over explain much of anything and because everything is normal to her and it's not an overly descriptive style of writing or dialogue she isn't explaining the why behind anything so we're not learning how Edinburgh ended up this way like I was saying before it seems both old-fashioned and incredibly modern and I still don't know why that is, I don't know what happened to make Edinburgh this way. There's been some references to like something going wrong but that hasn't been explained, I don't know if it will be since I only have like 100 pages left or something. <laughs> There's also very little explanation about how the magic works here and as well as that the chapters are really short in this book which I usually love, I do love short chapters but some of them just seem out of place. <laughs> It's almost as if some of the chapters are kind of episodic and it's just like snapshots of her going about her day-to-day -day life rather than one flowing story because every so often I come across a chapter and I'm like why was that there? That seemed really random. And I'm noticing that I really have to pay attention to every single word that's in this book. This book definitely seems like the sort of story where if you miss just one sentence then that was probably the sentence that something happened. <laughs> because she just seems to walk down a street and get pulled into some kind of problem every single chapter. It's almost as if you blink and she's in a completely different situation and it's like wait what? <laughs> How did we get here? That being said I'm not disliking the book, in fact a lot of my enjoyment for this book is coming down to the fact that it is set in Edinburgh and I understand all of the places that they're referencing. If it wasn't set in Edinburgh then I don't think I would be enjoying it as much. I also just kind of wish there was more of an atmosphere, again the writing style and the way that this is told from this perspective just doesn't really suit description, there is very little description or building up of an atmosphere and I would just love for that to be the case because I want a ghost story but it doesn't feel like a ghost story. But I am just kind of going along with it, it is proving to be a quick read, I just feel very ambivalent at the minute so I don't know don't really know what to do with that. Um, I will be finishing it since I do only have an hour and a half left of the audiobook and I do really want to love it so I'm trying to think what it is that's keeping me reading. I'm definitely intrigued to see where it goes because currently I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I really need to think more beforehand when I'm having coffee <laughs> because I had two coffees this morning and uh, now I feel kind of anxious which doesn't usually happen with coffee because I am very used to caffeine but I don't know something about going to the Apple store is just making me really anxious they look really intimidating from the outside and I don't know what the solution to my problem is going to be so <sighs> I'm kind of hoping that I can just leave my laptop with them for a bit and then come back and throw money at them and everything's going to be solved so uh <laughs> I'm also in my bright pink raincoat because uh it's a bit gloomy outside today and a bit drizzly and rainy so everything's going to be fine it's going to be fine p.m. and I haven't really done too much since getting home. I didn't really do too much in general actually because I didn't end up reading in a coffee shop as I planned because it was very rainy on a Sunday which meant that 
all of the coffee shops were very very full. <laughs> so I did just have my lunch and then wandered around taking a few photos but not for too long because there wasn't really anywhere particular that I fancied going so the repair of my laptop is going to be delayed a little bit so the issue with it is the battery the battery needs servicing and I think basically just replacing which I am not surprised about at all because I run my laptop to the ground <laughs> my poor little laptop does so much for me because I'm constantly running so many programs that are really intense all the video software photoshop stuff like that and I usually have them all going on at the same time obviously I work from home I have my two different jobs it, it's it does a lot of work, my little laptop, so I am not surprised that it's just tired because honey, so am I. <laughs> and that's completely fine, they can repair it, but they did say it could take up to five days, which it probably wasn't going to because they already had the parts in store, but I couldn't risk that because I work from home and I need my laptop to be able to work tomorrow. However, I do have a week off during the week of Halloween, so I am going to drop my laptop back off at the store later this week, this upcoming week, and then they can fix that when I don't need it. <laughs> so that has been put on hold for now. My laptop does still currently work, so it is just a case of the battery doesn't work by itself, so I have to have my laptop plugged in when I'm using it, but other than that, it's fine. So at least there will be a resolution and I can just kind of throw money at it and be sorted. Which on that note, I do actually want to just give a little shout out to all of my patrons because the anxiety I felt earlier about actually going to get my laptop repaired wasn't about money or anything. It's mainly just because the Apple store looks terrifying to me. I hate how like sterile it looks. It just reminds me of doctors and hospitals, which triggers my anxiety. So I just hate the look of them and it makes me really uncomfortable how formal it all feels so that's why I was anxious largely. My anxiety has never been about money because the money that I get from my Patreon does largely go into savings. For instance there's it like this where I know I have the security available for if technical problems do come up or if should something come up like this it's there and it makes me feel so secure. So I do just want to give a massive shout out to anybody who does choose to support me on Patreon because it genuinely means so much that I just have this available because I can imagine fully how distraught I would be right now if I didn't have that available. So a massive, massive thank you to my patrons for supporting me that way. And obviously to everyone who watches my channel and everything as well, because the support on here also does support me just in general life as well. And I do get a little bit of income from AdSense and stuff. So that does also help, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I actually came here to tell you that I did in fact finish reading The Library of the Dead by T.L. Huchu and I rated it two stars. This, this was sitting around three stars for a while but then the last little portion that I read just turned kind of ridiculous. <laughs> and there was one chapter in particular that I read and was just like, okay. <laughs> Had that scene happened earlier in the book, that would have been my kind of last straw, I'm DNF in this now situation. Not because it was anything particularly awful, it was just ridiculous. And considering I already wasn't really into the book, I was just like, I actually saw a review that said that the story feels more like it should be in a middle grade book. And that I completely agree with. Everything about the tone of this was just mixed up. <laughs> I was so confused all the way throughout about the age range of everything. The audience, the characters, just everything involved because it's almost as if that scene that I've just been calling ridiculous would have made sense in a middle grade book because there are more allowances with that but with this one I would have expected more believability or at least a bigger build up to get me to suspend my disbelief. That just didn't happen at any point in this book and so I read the scene and was like what what has this turned into and that just carried on throughout and it did turn into a case where unfortunately the only thing I really enjoyed about this book was the fact that I could pinpoint exactly where they were in Edinburgh because I know Edinburgh now <laughs> so I am kind of sad about that I'm not gonna lie I'm disappointed I thought I was really going to love this one but that was unfortunately really not the case <laughs> and I really wanted to love it Ugh. I am quite satisfied though that I did read most of that today. That's just, mm, love it when that happens. Especially because I feel like I've been quite slow at reading recently. So managing to sneak in another book before the end of this vlog, 
very satisfying. And it also means I get to start a new book at the start of a new week, at the start of a new vlog, which is always just great when it lines up that way. For now, I am going to wrap up this one. So don't forget to leave a comment to let me know that you're here. Let me know your thoughts on the books if you've read them yourself, or if you just want to say hi and you don't know what to actually say, what emoji can we have? Leave me the black heart emoji because all of the book covers in this video of the books that I've read have been black covers, which is going to be so satisfying for the thumbnail. I love that for me. So leave me a black heart or just any heart if you don't have the black one. But for now, I shall love you and leave you and let you get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you found a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.